Salut tout le monde, hello everyone. Welcome to Florence Factorio. So, today's video is going to be a bit longer than the previous one. I'm actually more or less done with at least this phase of this map. It's going to require further tweaking, but at this point, it works well enough to be worth showing off. So that is what we are about to do. For those of you who are curious, my name is Florin. Uh, I'm a French-Canadian. <clears throat> Today you're going to be visiting my 1000 science per minute map. Uh, this is not the biggest map I have made. The specific goal of this map is to reach 1000 science per minute. However, uh, I'm not totally done yet. I need to do some tweaking on the different towns to reach that goal. But today, I decided to give people a tour. We are going to start with what you are seeing right now, which is the central control for the entire map. Everything in this map is being controlled and monitored from here. What we have here is what I like to call nerves. The dials, the displays, I should say, at the center top of the screen right now are the steam level for the power plants. Each power plant that I have right now, uh, that being a total of four, at the moment, I have monitoring for uh, steam levels. The way this works will be shown later, but basically it is a way to make sure we don't burn more nuclear fuel cells than we have to to generate the power we need. Uh, in order to do this, we generate steam, store it, and use it. The number itself is out of 25,000, which is the total you can get in one tank. I'm using uh, a monitoring tank, no matter how many tanks the power plant has, so the number is easy to retrieve. The power plants are actually uh, equal, all the same, except for the wood-burning power plant, which is used just to get rid of the wood, which is what the 10 steam engines here are all about. If you look on the last hour, I've been using peaks up to about just under 4 gigawatts. Look on the 10 hour, I've peaked at 4.2. Uh, depending on how I'm set up, this should not be a problem. The way I've got it set up is I can turn on and off the different power plants using the control which is down here. It is set up to be able to handle up to six power plants with the number of lights I have. Uh, I only have four right now. P is the number of power plants that are on. I've turned it down to two just now. The reason for this is I've just stopped science production. The reason for that is I finished my latest test run. This will, uh, first of all, allow us to have a better look at how things look when they are stacked up and not necessarily running. It makes for a better look. Things are not moving as much for the video. But it also uh, is because right now I'm actually short on mineral. <coughs> if we look on the green network here and the red network, these are the actual control networks for my entire map. P is the power level. B is uh, for one of the two different storage uh, for ore, you see uh, red controls are basically we uh, a way of saying this needs to be produced. So right now we're producing blue belts, concrete, landfill, and level three modules for production, as well as iron ore. <coughs> this changes a bit because it's all being controlled by inventories. <coughs> Sorry about that. The Stuff I use to build stuff, so everything you can see here is this is basically the control on the left here at the center for everything. I can adjust the levels of how much I will store of anything in here. All the beside your combinators point toward what they control. So this one here controls blue belts, this one here controls red belts, etc. So I'll stop making these at 5000, but the blue ones at a million. Why a million? Because I use a lot of them at once when I use them. So it's nice to have a stock. Uh, 
the way this works is I don't have that many factories making all of these. It's all concentrated in the central factory, which is the next thing we're going to be visiting. These here control the inventory for science vials. If we look here, at the moment, we're not actually making vials, but the lights are on. Why is that? That's because the inventories are below thresholds. Right now, for all the vials, except, I think, no, even the white ones, my threshold is 150,000 in the storage. Right now, if you look, everything's below 150,000. But, I've got a central control here, which is currently off. If I turn it on, science production will resume. Right now, it's not working. I just turned it off. If I turn it on, as you can see, the light turns on, and we start getting the red signal. If I turn it back off, the red signal is no longer there, and this light turns off. These stay on because they are ahead in the logic circuit of this one. That's intentional, because I want to be able to see what's going on. The displays here give us a numerical value as well as a graphic that shows us how full or empty this is. This will show us it'll go to full at 25,000 and this one will come off when it's almost empty. As you can see right now, these two are not working. That's because I only have four power plants. These turned out to be enough, but I wanted to plan ahead to add six. I may need them a little bit later. So from here, we go down to the construction factory. This is the only factory town that uses the logistics network to carry stuff around. The reason for this is that once it's actually done doing its main job of filling up the boxes, this has very low activity unless I'm actually building stuff. So it is more computer nation. It's more economical on computer resources, basically, to have robots here that will then turn off and not take computer resources when I'm not using this part. Here we actually make green, red, and blue boards, as well as level one, two, and three, well, actually level three of the modules, all of them. So, efficiency, productivity, and speed, the, they get deposited as everything else here that is controlled in purple boxes, but the arm that puts it in is controlled by a signal we get from the deciders we saw earlier in Nervous that tells it if it's going to put it in the box or not. This way I can control inventory, but the whole system reacts really quickly when we start needing it. So all three modules, we make a few things we need to build other stuff. The copper wire here is used for a small number of things that need it, but they're not used for making the boards. Those are made locally so they don't go around on the network because that would be just too many robots for nothing. And then all the stuff from landfill. These are because we need them to make other things like armor. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I actually make armor here. Uh, we make all the buildings and everything else I need to be able to build. <coughs> Sorry about that. This is the forges for construction town. A bunch of electric furnaces in a row. Making plates or bricks. And we get the ore from the trains up here. Originally I was going to have, well I'm actually still going to have trains getting stone eventually. But because I don't actually use that much stone, at the very beginning, before all my trains were working, I got this mine set up and a few others, and they're still not empty, so there's another one here that's almost done. 
But until they're empty, I'm not actually going to go and get it by train. It's just not worth it. Eventually, I'm also going to have to go and get coal, but I'm using not that much, and I still have 5.7 million in this mine. So... Then we get to nuclear processing. Again, this will eventually get its ore from uh, trains. Right now we're still on one of my two original mines. There was a mine here, which is now, got, now gone. And there's another one here that used to be 11 million, now 7.7. <coughs> We get the ore this way, comes down, gets processed. This one, because I actually built it before I built Nervous as its own little control system, uh, that I will eventually, when I make this uh, totally independent, want to keep here. Uh, I'm gonna export inventories and remove the lights here and put them in Nervous, but for now I'm keeping them here. I haven't finished fiddling with this part yet uh, because it works the thing I have left to do is make it electrically independent uh, it's why we have a small number of solar panels and battery assemblies here at the moment they just provide power to the main grid but eventually I'm going to add more down here so this can power the nuclear power uh, processing by itself. The goal behind that is to make sure I don't get into a brownout situation. This is one of many, many, many failsafes I want to implement. At the moment, the main failsafe I have is in Nervous. I forgot to show you earlier. This little thing here, this is power level. Right now we're at 100%, the display shows 99 because it's only two digits, but it's 100 right now because this is full. If it gets too low, I get a humongously powerful alarm on the map that starts blaring sound very loudly, so it's hard to miss, and I can come here and increase the number of power plants that are working. At the moment, this cannot happen unless I don't have all of my power plants on because all of my power plants being on provides enough power for everything to run which is why I only have four not six now here primary processing which is controlled by the inventory and the boxes here for uranium 238 right here if we have more than 200,000 Uranium-238, we stop refining. So this stops being sent as a signal, which means the alarms here stop feeding ore into the centrifuges. All the uranium gets stored here. The first thing that happens is we do refining, refining of 238 to 235 using the Kovarek process. So Kovarex enrichment process requires 4235, 5238, and you get one more 235 out, it costs you 2338. You want to have this running, but you don't want it to eat all of you 238 because you need it for other stuff. So it is controlled using this little guy here that multiplies the amount of 235 by 2 using signal 5, which is read by this year, the whole results of which is I'll stop refining once I have half as much uranium-235 as 238. Because there's a few delays in the whole process, you can end up with a little bit over, which is why if we look down here, I have 103.8k uranium-235. That's fine. I don't mind. The boxes can handle it. This actually comes down to uh, just the fact that these, once they are being loaded, 
have more in them than for one process. So they run a little bit still uh, when they stop. And as they're full of 235 to be able to run, uh, you end up with too much once it all settles down. Next, again controlled by the little deciding things here. We produce uranium shell cells until we've got 50,000 which are then stored here in these red boxes. Why red boxes? Because I'm using the logistics network to export them from here to the train that then sends it out to the power plants. Eventually I'm going to use a belt, but at the moment I'm using the logistics network. Next we receive by train the spent fuel cells. These get sent here and processed up here. We also make nuclear fuel, which is exported using the logistics network to every train station on the map. So yes, my logistics network has to cover the whole map. There are two exceptions to this, which is the input of the ore sorters, meaning that it's really important that all the mines provide the fuel to the trains, which we will see a bit later. The reason I don't care that I'm using the logistics network to fuel the trains is very simple. Nuclear fuel is super crazy dense and it runs for a very long time. So the trains don't need a whole lot. If you look on production over the last say 10 hours, because I've been running a large production line. If you look at the consumption of these guys over 10 hours, using 1.5 a minute. So, really, 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 really easy for them to work. On the same vein, while we're here, if you look at this here, you can see fuel consumption for the, the reactors is a bit weird. It's very jagged. The reason behind this is that it's directly tied to power consumption. The way I've set up my power plants means that I'm not actually wasting uranium fuel cells, or very little. There's still a few tweaks I may need to do on one or two of them. But I'm basically trying to be very efficient. Down here we see the counters of everything I care about. Uranium fuel cells for the power plants, 235 and 238. The reason I don't care about the view for nuclear fuel for the trains is because I know very well that these are able to produce more than I need. So, I was talking about science earlier, so I guess we should start going around. Oh, one last thing. Here we can see the basically central bank, which is the yellow boxes. They're getting pretty full, but that's sort of fine. Uh, there's very little in here that needs to be added still. But it's basically all the stuff I'm using for construction. Oh, and down here we have the petroleum refinery for the construction city. So this is where we make plastic. So let me put my division on because I don't have lights here. And it's getting dark. So from petroleum refining got some inventory transfer so we can produce light with heavy and petroleum gas with light. All of this controlled around here using the pumps so that I don't end up with the higher tier products too full so I can't make petroleum gas. We're also making acid here which is used for making blue boards and for extracting uranium from the current mine. We have storage here, We've still got plenty of crude, and it's actually all coming from here. Surprisingly enough, it's still able to provide plenty. And again, I've got a few displays here. Crude at the top, I uh, know the top is uh, lubricant. Heavy, light, petroleum gas, and on the right, acid. 
Next, let us go see. Let's get some of these. While I'm here, might as well drop the inventory I don't need. Now, because the map is kind of big and based around trains, walking around is sort of dangerous. So in order to avoid problems, I'm using something I call a tech train. This is basically the train I'm using to move around the map. It gets fueled by either fuel, nuclear fuel or wood. It only gets wood if I have way too much in the boxes. This is what controls what fuel this gets. The reason I'm using wood only on this one is because it doesn't actually matter much, even if it doesn't get a speed boost. Now, the train station we want to go to is here, the left pinky, which is where we do the red and green science file. Now, because the red and green science vials are very simple, they are both being made in the same town. These are the only ones I make in the same place. We start here from raw ore. In the case of the red and green, all we need is iron ore and copper ore. Ore comes up here, gets directed to forges that turn it into plate and then gets directed either left or right for the green or red vials. Let's go left to start with the red vials. Red vials are very simple. All they need is copper plate and gear. So what we have here is three columns making gear for two columns making <coughs> red vials. Now as you can see there's hole in the belts in the middle. The reason for this is basically tweaking. Uh, I had beacons in these before. I've actually removed some of the beacons just so I can try and get close as possible to 1000 science per minute. I want to go too high. This is important for the goal of this map. Our goal is 1000 science per minute. So this is able to do just that. I'm actually making way too much gear, but that's fine. I survive. Right side, we do greens. Now, greens are a little more complicated because you need to make belts and you need to make these little guys as well. So you need transport belts and inserters. So on the left here, I make the belts from iron plate and gears. Comes up. Then we dump these on the belt here. From here, we need to make green boards and gears that are going to be used to make this little guy. The green boards come down here, end up on the same belt as the iron plates we need. This is a tree ingredient recipe. Gets dumped up. Comes up here. Feeds the green line. Once again, this is tuned to do about a thousand a minute. Actually, a little bit over, but that's fine. Because as you can see, all the arms here are controlled by a central control, which you may now be starting to be familiar with. So if they don't get the red signal that we're making green vials, they don't output. Why is the belt here full? 
Good question. The reason is the train is full. Oh, our train has actually left. Meaning it is now at the research center over here. You can actually see it. Right here. Now there's a little bug in how I set up these guys here. That means that the train doesn't empty completely properly. But I've basically fixed it so it goes both ways. Right now the reason this train is stuck here is I'm out of another one of the vials because I've stopped production. In this case I'm actually out of white vials. So we export the green and the red here. <coughs> and then we can get back on the train and see where we need to go next. We're going to be going here to Benjamin Smith to see the chemical packs and the So, this is where we make the blue vials, also known as the chemical science pack. Chemical science packs. Again, one of the reasons I've turned it off is so I can cross the tracks without too much worry. So, to make the chemical science pack, we need a few more things. So, we start here. Crude oil comes in here. Gets stacked in these tanks. Processed. <clears throat> These are to refine down the products. Petroleum gas. Up here, we need plastic and sulfur, which we will need a lot of sulfur just to make the science bag themselves because it's one of the ingredients. It needs one, one per. What else do we need? Red science boards. So we make a lot of them. Right here, which is what the plastic is for. Mostly. <clears throat> because that's not all that easy. As you can see, we would have a board outside. Again, we will have copper and iron coming into forges here to make all the plates we're going to be needing. In this case, some steel, some copper, some copper again, and some iron plates. Here we make the engines, because we need two per impact. Engines come up here, gets channeled into the blue. Red boards being made here again, we're using the same design we saw earlier. Things are fed bottom up. And we see assembly machine making copper wire, the green boards and the red boards, all to output red boards. The red boards get output at the top. Come down here. And like everything else, they get mixed up in here. Red boards, actually, because we need a lot of them, three per, get their own belt. The engines and the sulfur are sent on the same belts, so they get mixed up down here using two mixers. And then it comes up here, gets sent down to the blue lines, and then we do the chem packs right here. Again, you'll notice there's not as many beacons as I could have. The reason for this is because I wanted to get 1000 science per minute. So I had to actually tune down how much this produces after I build the first one. The blue vials then get set down here. 
concentrated on this one belt. It then takes it down here to be put in the boxes in the train. And then we can follow the petroleum gas line up. You can see they're being used here for plastic. They're being used here for sulfur. Using them for plastic again here. Because you need a lot of plastic to make all those red boards. Next, we are going to go and visit Infern Dragon, which is where we make... Wait, which one is next one? Make purple. Infern Dragon. So, production science back. Next. One of the things that I wanted to do on this map is minimize how much everything moves around. So the only stuff moving by train right now are me, ore, and science packs. I don't move plates around. Oh, and crude oil. I forgot. So we've got coal, iron, copper, and stone going around by train. Eventually we'll have uranium as well, the boxes are actually full for that, I'm just not using it that way yet. Now, this town, as we will see, this is, right, like this is the entire town, except for that little part on the right, right of Tucker Br Brisken, Brisson, uh, that's a storage area. So. Let's go to the top. This is the way I've got this one set up. Everything is basically centralized at the top for the trains. So we get all the ore up here. Iron, copper, stone, coal. Which is everything I need to make the purple vials. As well as crude so we can make the petroleum products we need. This all comes for the cases of stuff that needs to go in furnaces. All comes this way. Turn it into plates. We pipe down here. Where we make level one productivity modules, which are necessary for making these little guys. And here we make furnaces, electric ones, which are also an ingredient for the production science pack. All of these are just for making furnaces. There's steel, belts, bricks from belts and the red boards from these assembly right here. This goes down. It's also where we use the plastic. Here we make rails because you need 30 per science pack. Now rails cannot use science uh, production modules but the bars they are made of can and it turns out these are being made so fast that even this way I don't run out of iron sticks. <clears throat> so these get piped down here into belts. Try to go down here and join with everything else from the rails to the furnaces to the production modules to make are purple vials. And all these nice purple vials go up here, get fed from this belt, 
all the way up to the train. Once this train has full inventory, it leaves like all the other science ones. Next, let's go see the yellow vial production. It's just up here, we need to go to Pshore... Bjorn Boo. Some of these names are not easy to say. Bjorn Boo. Now this one is kind of nice because we're actually going to get a bit of a Thor as we get it. Here we go. So, this is one of my standard train wait stations. Uh, it's basically just a parking space for the trains when they come in. As we go right, we're going to see trains and all the different things. Now the yellow vials, also known as utility science packs need a lot of material to make a thousand a minute so I've got two sets of trains coming in with iron ore and copper ore so the iron comes in copper comes in as well as one train coming in with coal and one train coming in with crude Now this train's not leaving, why? even though it's empty, why? Because it's got the signal E, meaning that these guys here are not empty enough for it to be worth it. For it to be. So up here, we've got crude transformation, again with different levels. Transformation. We're getting a lot of lube, a lot of acid. These guys here just do conversion of light to petroleum gas and heavy to, uh, to light. On the right side here, we have probably what turned out to be the biggest overbuilt I've done. Uh, I basically built way too much plastic. I could remove one of these and probably will in the near future. Because I'm making a lot of plastic and I'm actually making too much right now. This plastic goes up here on these belts. The all gets sent over here, just above the forges, where we make two things that use a lot of plastic, green boards, red boards that eventually make blue boards. So there's a lot of plastic in those red boards. Also need acid to make blue boards. So as we see here, we need two blue boards per. And here we're feeding all the materials of the assemblies. And here we make these guys, low density structures, which you also need three of per science pack, so we need a lot of it. Which is why I've got these so many lines that go so high but full of beacons and everything else. So they go as fast as possible. They get fed in three lines and output in the middle line. And then Last but definitely not least, got all these guys here making electric motors, electric engines I should say. So 
all of this is just to make electric engines. These guys here. It's a huge column of it, and it can barely keep up. With making last ingredients, which is these damn bastards. The flying robot frames. They take a lot of materials that themselves are not easy to make. Uh, a lot of steel for the engines, a lot of some steel for the body itself. There's the batteries. It's a lot. So here we have to make the frames, we have to make boards, and if I remember right, I'm actually making the batteries up here. Yeah, I'm actually making batteries here. And then piping them using a bunch of lines. Then condense into two and feed down here. And all of these have as many beacons as I could f basically easily fit after I built it. So we're at plus 90% speed, but we're still using, uh, doing 40 production more. So that means they're actually coming out decently fast. And all of that. Then it goes this way, it gets united with the wood and steel structure, the processing unit to make our yellow vials. So this is probably the most complex of all the installations. Even though space science is bigger, it is relatively simple because space science doesn't require such a complicated mixture of elements. So next, let us visit space science. I never have trouble remembering very simply because it is called Inverted Moon Goat. Again, we can see the parking space for the train. This one we're actually seeing the trains as we come in but once again we start with ore in this case we need a lot of copper ore some coal a lot of iron ore and if I remember right this one doesn't get uh, crude oil by train simply because it turned out there was a very 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 large deposit that I had not even seen before I explored that specific part of the map when I decided to build here and it turns out it fits just nicely so that I can have it just next to where I was intending to do petroleum refinement so, good luck for me here. So on the side here, <coughs> we're processing crude oil. 
from advanced oil processing. Again, we have inventory controlled downgrading of heavy oil to light and light to petroleum gas. We need a lot of acid. some plastic, a lot of plastic, so plastic is being made here. One of the things we need a lot of for making rockets is rocket fuel. A rocket fuel is best made using light oil, both for the solid fuel itself, because it's what gives you the best yield. It costs 10 units of light oil for one solid fuel, and it's 20, I think, for all the other ones. Let's go and have a look. Solid fuel, yeah, 10, 20, and 20. So it's actually worth it to convert heavy oil to light in order to make solid fuel. And because of how much plastic this all needs, I never run out of light. Now you'll notice an annoying lack of beacons here. Uh, the design I came up with when I made this was not very friendly, but I kind of liked the look. And it turned out I didn't need that many of them. So I decided to keep it. However, this is one area I can, if I start running out of rocket fuel, I can probably upgrade. Right now I'm making it there and up here. All of these are rocket fuel, so if I can come up with a better design, I can probably do it better. So we've got plastic coming down here. Science space is the one I have left to create, by the way. This is where everything comes together. To make science. This is where we're making science. I only have one factory making satellites, but it takes all of this little mini town here to make everything you need to make the satellites from the big batteries that you require a ton of uh, radar and everything solar panels but it's able to provide to both of these here we make again low density structures it's a very, very simple design. Uh, the crazy part is not the design as much as how much plastic and steel you need to feed this thing. And copper plate. Oh my god, you need so much copper plate. I mean, look at this. Uh, these are huge lines just to feed in copper plate. And when it's running, I get a little bit too much in the line. So you've got a trickle coming out of these lines here that are currently full that gets remixed with what's coming out the bottom to make plastic. Just to have a chance to feed it and I don't have them stuck in belts basically. So this is space science. As I said, it's big, but it's not a very complicated setup. And the last thing we are going to visit on this video is going to be research, which is down here. So we want to go Shiro the Kitten. Shiro. Here we receive all the different kinds of science vials. We're going to cheat a little bit since this one is almost full. Let's bring the space science in so you can have a look at what happens when a train arrives. Now the space train is not coming from too far. 
and since the vials, the train is currently empty of, well, the whole setup is empty of space vials, it'll give us a good chance to look at it. Train is going to come to the right of where my avatar is right now. Should be here any second. Let's go and have a look, see where it's at. There it is. It's going to unload into boxes that then themselves unload into a little belt that then mixes it around. The goal for that is to ensure that we don't get stuck on one end with like vials stuck at the last train but never being able to empty because we're out of stuff somewhere else. So this ensures that the vials can go on either top to bo or bottom. It has the slight disadvantage that it does cause little gaps in here while things are getting mixed up, but those are not problematic. Uh, it all comes out fast enough to be able to feed the then very important labs here. Two lines of labs in parallel with beacons in the middle. For a relatively long, 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 and long line. There's a lot. The goal here is to be able to eat uh, 1.5k science packs a minute. So 1,500 science pack a minute. Why 1,500 when I said my goal was to reach 1,000? Because I want to be able to eat them faster than I'm supposed to be making them. So that it is relatively easy to see which file doesn't provide the 1,000. Once everything is running at once. So I'm able to eat them as fast as they are being made. And if one of the setups is running behind while it's running, then it'll bring everything lower and it makes it a little bit easier to just find out which one's going to provide it. Right now I'm working on robot speed. The reason for that is relatively simple. I've got 25 levels of mining productivity, which is fine by me right now. And the thing I need to have my map perform better really comes down to logistics robot, even though you've not seen them anywhere else except for the construction factory. Reason for this is relatively simple. I'm trying something I've never successfully done before. A robot-based ore storage and sorting system. Ore storage right now is important to make this map run properly. I get the ore from the mines, I store it centrally, and then I take it from the central storage and dispatch it out to the different places. But that means I'm limited by the throughput of those storage systems. The little robots, if I'm going to use them, have to be fast enough to keep up. And the reason for that is I wanted to have the ability to use trains that have more than one kind of stuff in them. So mixed trains for whore. But I need the trains that go to the towns to be pure. So trains can come in here, get sorted out as the output, and then it goes to the right boxes. I could have done this with belts but it becomes a humongous mess very, very, very quickly when you do it that way. So, if I wanted to keep the number of tracks and the amount of space and everything else low and actually keep performances okay, and by that I don't necessarily just mean the throughput, but I mean on my computer, because I have other maps that don't run at 60 FPS like this one does, then I need to, to see about having as few entities as possible, and I decided it was easier to have 3,000 robots per storage system and just boost up their speed. Right now, I'm actually there. When I got worker robot speed 15, I was able to provide fast enough using the two of these that I have 
to be able to do it right. Now this one looks like it's actually over full, which kind of annoys me. This is due to uh, something I know can happen. And it's due to the new mine I added here, which took way too long to, for it to get empty at this point. Uh, I'm going to have to limit how much the boxes here store. But I wanted to keep it loading the trains fast, so obviously they ended up storing too much. There's a coal mine just north of here. So instead of using a train, I used one line. And, well, just one arm in a box that's controlled by the level in here. So I can mine some slowly but surely locally here. The other ore storage is at the other end of the map here. That's actually functioning right now. Yes, I can see there's a bunch of robots stuck here. That's normal. And it's actually a lot less bad than it was before I redesigned it. This one only does iron and copper. Because those are the two I need a lot more of. Right now the reason the levels are below 1.5 million is uh, while the storage area themselves are fine, I've actually gone and ran out of ore in a few of my mines. So I'm going to have to build new mines, basically. Which is why this run is over. And this is a complete tour of my map. Just a quick view of everything. But look forward to future videos or join me on Twitch. I'm streaming. My name is Florin. I hope you'll have a very good day. Bye-bye.